Hello and welcome to my Imola Grand Prix driver rankings and sort of race rundown as well. That was an absolutely exceptional Grand Prix that we just had. Mixed conditions everywhere. A, I was about to say a brand new race winner, but absolutely not. Lando Norris back on the podium in P3 for McLaren. Ferrari having a phenomenal race. Struggles once again for that secondary Red Bull seat and calamities for Mercedes. Absolute calamities. But it is also your chance to get involved in this video as well. So down in the description down below, there will be a link to another one of my Google Docs forms in which you can fill out your driver rankings for today's videos. You'll be asked to rank each driver 1 through to 20. 20 being the best. They had the ultimate weekend and 1 being an absolute stinker of a Grand Prix. They did not do very well at all. Then in a video in a couple of days time, I will then collate all of those results, average them out, and that will be an audience average rankings, which I will compare to my own in today's video and also to my algorithm output as well for the driver of the weekend, but that will come in a few days time. So without further ado, we will jump on into my Imola Grand Prix driver rankings. We'll be taking a look at the championships, both drivers and constructors, as to where we stand after the Imola Grand Prix, and also taking a look at my predictions scores for that little contest that I ran on Thursday with the audience. So let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship, and it is Lewis Hamilton who is leading it from Max Verstappen by just one point, courtesy of the fastest lap bonus point that he scored this Grand Prix. Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc are both ahead of the other Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas. Then comes Ricardo and Sainz, both ahead of Sergio Perez, only on 10 points so far. Then it's Lance Stroll, Gasly, Sonoda, Raikkonen and Ocon, with a whole heap of drivers still yet to score. And in the Constructors' Championship, it is still Mercedes who maintain a lead, although it is less. It is just seven points at the moment. McLaren still P3 ahead of Ferrari, Aston Martin, Alfa Tori, Alfa Romeo, Alpine, and Haas and Williams. And then for those audience members who took part in the contest, there were 30 of you this time. Here are the results from those predictions. We have a victory for Tushar Singh, 16 points in that race. Absolutely mega. I think the most you can score is, I want to say 25. I don't actually know the top score in my own point system. And yes, it is 25. You get two points for every correct driver in the correct position in your top five for the race and for qualifying. That's a maximum of 20 points. And then you get five points for your bold prediction. So yes, a maximum of 25 points for each of these rounds. So congratulations to you, Tushar Singh as well. Evan Darcy, you were so close behind just two points back. Matej as well. Gemma Gibson, Mark O'Daly and Aaron from the Five Red Lights channel, all on 13 points, and then there's me languishing in the midfield. I did a little bit better than I did last time out, but not too much better on 9 points, and then there are a couple people on 8, 7, a Doctor Who channel on 6, and then F, F were, F were on 2. I'm not sure if that was a jokey one, as I did receive a couple of jokey ones which I had to take out, as the bold predictions were just lots of swear words. And with all of that out of the way, we will jump on into the driver rankings. Now, I have done this from 1 through to 20, as that's how my algorithm scores the drivers. 1 being the worst score and the worst possible weekend that driver could have had, and 20 being the absolute best. Like I said, there's a link in the description down below for you guys to do exactly the same. And we start with Lewis Hamilton, and I've given him 16 out of 20. Wasn't the best Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton. He sort of had an okay start and then slipped back a little bit from Max Verstappen. But when the tyres started to become those slicked immediates, like we saw in Turkey, he was clawing that gap back. Then obviously had his little uh, incident uh, overtaking George Russell or lapping George Russell, put it in the wall. And then he was clawing back some time as well. Uh, massively passing cars, unlike what Valtteri Bottas could do. So it's not a flawless weekend for Lewis Hamilton by any stretch, but 16 out of 20 will do. And then heading to his teammate, Valtteri Bottas, 5 out of 20. A weekend to forget, Bottas cannot drive in the rain, and he is very quickly losing my faith in that second Mercedes seat, especially if Sergio Perez can get his act together as well in the second Red Bull seat. They really need a good wingman once again. 
But from Valtteri Bottas scoring 5 out of 10, we take a look at Max Verstappen. 19 out of 20. This is the highest score I have given so far. A 19 out of 20. It was a flawless weekend. Literally couldn't have done anything uh, wrong at all or didn't step a foot wrong. Apart from one small little incident uh, on the safety car restart uh, after the red flag when they for some reason did a rolling start. I guess that was because of the weather. But he did have that little slippy slide. That was about the only error he made this entire weekend. And also with your rankings as well, please consider the entirety of the weekend, practice, qualifying, and also the race. Don't just base it off of the race, but also if you want to, that's absolutely fine. But from Max Verstappen's incredible 19 out of 20 score, we go to Sergio Perez, 8. Qualifying brought this up from a lower number, closer towards Valtteri Bottas, as he put it on the front row. That was absolutely astonishing, but the race didn't quite go his way in the slightest. It was a bit of a, eh, a bit of a messy race for Sergio Perez. A couple of spins, a couple of mistakes, uh, especially where he was P4 after the safety car restart. Red Bull were going to overtake Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship, and he binned it. And then he didn't score any points, and now Mercedes still lead the Constructors' Championship. Not what they wanted at all. And so from Sergio Perez's 8 out of 20, we take a look at Daniel Ricciardo. 13 out of 20. He did struggle just a little touch in the McLaren. He definitely was not as comfortable as Lando Norris in the McLaren, but there were some good defensive moves and some good obligations of the team orders, as well as a good qualifying as well. So 13 out of 20 for Daniel Ricciardo. Overall, not a bad weekend. But Lando Norris... 18 out of 20, take a bloody bow. That was a very good race. The only reason why this isn't 20 out of 20 or even 19 out of 20 is that little qualifying mistake he had, dipping those four wheels over the white line, lap deleted. That was about the only mistake he's made. Making those soft tires last after the safety car restart after the red flag from just over halfway all the way to the end, holding off Lewis Hamilton for three or four DRS attacks. That was incredible. Holding off the Ferraris as well, even overtaking Leclerc to get into that P2 position. And then as well, scoring a podium on pure pace. Mega. And from Lando Norris, we then head on into Sebastian Vettel. Nine. I don't really know. Qualifying was eh for Sebastian Vettel. The race was also eh. It didn't start fantastically well at all. Uh, there was the issue with his brake by wire, his BBW issue that he was complaining about on the radio. The brakes were on fire, especially for Lance Stroll as well. And then he had his uh, 10 second uh, time penalty as a siren whizzes past my house. So apologies for all of that. He then had that uh, 10 second penalty uh, for the tires not being on the car five minutes before the race is due to start, which is a very strict safety regulation that they must adhere to. So that is definitely a slam dunk penalty. <sighs> yeah, it just didn't really go well for him at all. Didn't score any points and then was overtaken uh, just by Sergio Perez to finish down in P12, I believe. And from Sebastian Vettel's 9 out of 20, we head to Lance Stroll's 10 out of 20. Again, uh, not ideal. It was a solid race, a very good race from Lance Stroll. Just lots of little errors. The brakes were on fire completely. Again, not his fault in the slightest. I feel though I have been a touch harsh as he did actually finish P7 in the Aston Martin, which is not fantastic as we know and as Otmar knows as well. So I do feel 10 is a little bit on the harsh side, but I think 10 is fair. And from Lance Stroll, in the Canadian... And then from Lance Stroll, we take a look at Fernando Alonso. Nine. He crashed on the formation lap. He didn't do very well in qualifying. He spun a couple of times. He spun under the safety car when there were double yellow flags waved as well. Just not a very good weekend for Fernando Alonso. So nine out of 20 for him. And then we head to his teammate, Esteban Ocon. Eleven. Didn't really see anything at all from Esteban Ocon. The only reason why he gets better than Alonso is because he did much better than Alonso in qualifying. And from Alpine, we take a look at Ferrari and Charles Leclerc, 16 out of 20. Mega, 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 mega. Qualifying, exceptional, P4 on the grid. And then in the race, just controlled, measured. There weren't really that many mistakes. And actually, I do feel 16 is a touch on the low side, but 16 is what Leclerc got.
And Carlos Sainz, just by pure uh, virtue of him not being quite as good, receives a 14. A couple of mistakes in the race, which he lambasted himself for on the team radio, swearing, etc, etc. Much like Charles Leclerc does to himself, very self-critical. But 14 out of 20 for the Spaniard. A very, very good weekend for him. And from Carlos Sainz, we then take a look at Pierre Gasly, and I have scored him a P12. With the benefit of hindsight, those wet weather tyres, the full wets starting the Grand Prix rather than the intermediates was not the right call. But you can, of course, see why it would have been or could have been the better tyre, and that just really hampered him from there, and he just lost a lot of pace and didn't really have any pace at all after that to take it into the points. Did he score any points, actually? I can't remember. And from Pierre Gasly, we take a look at Yuki Tsunoda, and I have matched the Alpha Tories as 12 out of 20. Qualifying was eh for Yuki Tsunoda. He crashed in Q1. And then, what was it in the race? Again, not really much happened. After the safety car restart, it was going okay, and then he spun. So perhaps I feel 12 is a little bit on the generous side for Yuki. He may should really have scored 10, but 12 is locked in. And from Yuki, we take a look at Kimi Raikkonen, P14, scoring points in the Alfa Romeo. That is absolutely mega, although he is under investigation uh, for his uh, starting infringements or restart infringements or something like that. Very similar to Sergio Perez spinning behind the safety car, losing positions, then coming back onto the track to regain the positions is what I get from this... Uh, thing from Kimi Raikkonen, so he could lose those points, which would be a big shame, and that is a big boost in my 14 out of 20 score for the Finn. But taking a look at Antonio Giovinazzi, 11 out of 20. Again, much like Ocon, I just didn't really see anything from Antonio, and if there was anything, it was either him going off the track, etc. Whether that happened to Antonio, I don't actually know off the top of my head, but yeah, just a sort of average weekend. Qualifying really didn't go very well, and the race was just eh. And from Antonio Giovinazzi, we take a look at Mick Schumacher. 12 out of 20. That car is horrible to drive. I would not like to drive that car in the slightest, and I'm sure he doesn't really want to drive the car. He got everything he could out of it. He was still, what, two laps down uh, by the flag, even though they managed to unlap themselves uh, after the um, red flag incident, but that was only just the one lap. So they would have been three laps down, which just shows how bad this car is. No confidence whatsoever, and I believe there were a couple spins uh, in the race. I'm not 100% sure. And then to his teammate, Nikita Mazepin, 10. An improvement from Bahrain. He actually finished the Grand Prix, which someone in the comments or in the prediction, sorry, actually put that as their bold prediction that he will finish the race. So they scored an extra five bonus points. That is absolutely awesome. But ultimately, an eh race involved in the collision with Nikita Ma Oh, n what? <laughs> Involved in the collision with Nicholas Latifi, in which on Twitter he was immediately lambasted as being the person at fault, which is just not the case. It was Latifi that was coming back onto the track. Latifi was the one that lost control. Mazepin was already far right on the track. Yes, Mazepin could have backed off a little bit, but he's the one that is in the right. He's the one that shouldn't be giving way. It's Nicholas Latifi, the car that's just had a spin, that's coming back onto the track that must do it in a safe manner. Exactly like we saw in Italy, with Vettel taking out Stroll, and exactly like we saw in Canada, with Vettel almost taking out Hamilton. That's an accident that Vettel just happened to be the two instances uh, of that uh, little analogy there. But yes, not his fault. 10 out of 20. And then penultimately, we take a look at George Russell. 12 out of 20. Involved in a big collision with uh, Valtteri Bottas, actually. The two Mercedes or mm, semi-Mercedes semi junior driver George Russell and full-time Mercedes driver Valtteri Bottas. They were involved in a quite a significant collision. In my view, this is an entirely 50-50 incident. Bottas in front on a straight that isn't a straight, uh, drifting to the right, exactly as he is entitled to do to take the racing line in the left-hand chicane. He is entitled to do that. He can drift right as much as he likes. George Russell is behind, sort of alongside. Yes, the, the wheels are alongside each other. It is him that touches the white line slash grass. It is him that loses control of his car, and it is him that crashes into Valtteri Bottas. That's why it's sort of 50-50. It's Valtteri Bottas that is fully entitled to move right. It is George Russell knowing that he is fully entitled to move right. And then George Russell being the one to crash into Valtteri Bottas. That's why it's 50-50. And from George Russell, Nicholas Latifi, 10. 
Not an ideal weekend. Uh, he crash. Mm. Eh, a little bit more his fault than the one with Valtteri Bottas and George Russell. So perhaps he should have been in the single digits, maybe 8 out of 10, as he put himself in that position entirely. But qualifying was good. Qualifying was very good. He almost outqualified George Russell for the first time. So 10 out of 20. And there we go. There is my driver rankings and a breakdown of the Grand Prix that happened for Imola. Make sure to get your predictions, or not your predictions, your uh, rankings in that link in the description down below. And then they will all be collated in a video that comes out probably Monday or Tuesday, whenever I've crunched all of the numbers for the race. But that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed as my camera falls. But that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next episode with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.